Welcome everybody to our first in a series of how-to tutorials. Um, my name is Ryan. I will be walking you through how to create a bootable Ubuntu thumb drive. We decided to go ahead and use this as a first in our series because it is a precursor to a lot of things that we'll be doing in the future. So in the future you'll see a lot of uh, Ubuntu related tutorials common Linux things, some of the things that we have planned are how to create your own Apache server so you can run a website on your own computer at home, uh, several other things, how to create a RAID for your media archives, things of that nature. So uh, to get started here, let's go into Firefox and go to linuxlive.com. This will take you to the webpage for uh, Lily USB which will create a bootable version of Linux running on your Windows. So this is a Windows application that will create a bootable Linux thumb drive. Uh, once you get to the main page, go ahead and click on download. A little dialog box will pop up. Go ahead and click on save file. The file is only, I don't know, less than a meg. So it should only take a couple minutes to download. Once it's finished, go ahead and execute it. A little dialog box will pop up asking if you're sure. Click on run. Uh, now you can really install it to anywhere, but for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the desktop. So here, I'm going to extract it to my desktop here. Um, let me move it over here so I can access it easily later. All right, now we're going to need to download an ISO file of Linux. Go to uh, www.ubuntu.com. Spell it right and download the latest version. Right now that's 10.04, which means it was released April of 2010. Click on download Ubuntu. It'll give you two options, 32-bit or 64-bit. I'm using AMD Phenom 2, so I'm gonna go ahead and download the 64-bit version. If you don't know what you're using, just play it safe and download the 32-bit version. If you know you have a 64-bit processor, go ahead and download the 64-bit. So click on download, start download, save the file. This is going to be a huge file. This is um, about 700 megs, 697 megs. So this is going to take a while. All right, now we've downloaded our Ubuntu ISO. Let's go into our downloads folder, find it, and we're going to copy it to the desktop. There we go. Now open Lily USB Creator. Gives you a little notification saying what versions of Linux it supports. Okay, so this is a Lily USB Live Creator. If you click on the little drop down menu here, you'll notice that our thumb drive isn't in there. That's because I haven't plugged it in yet. So let's skip this step for now and we'll go into the choosing a source section. This is where you're going to add the ISO file you just downloaded. So let's go to our desktop here. And there it is, Ubuntu 10.04. It's gonna crank away and do its thing. Verify the file. Got a green light down here, so we're good. Next, we're going to go ahead and plug in our thumb drive. So go to computer, Plug in the drive. Yeah, there it is. Okay, now the important thing is remember the drive letter. So I'm using J. Go ahead and minimize this. Still not seeing it, so let's refresh. Drop down, there it is, J. And I'm only using a one gig drive. So we're gonna go ahead and format into uh, FAT32. Now, when you format into FAT32, or if you when you format at all, it's going to delete everything on the drive. So don't use something, don't use a thumb drive that you have a bunch of stuff on there you really care about, because it will get deleted. So the second part is, we're gonna adjust this slider for persistence. I'm only using one gig drive, so I'm gonna slide it all the way up. The persistence will create a section on the hard drive that will save your settings in the live version. So 
When you plug in this drive, you can boot from it and actually run Linux. The persistence is how much space you have to save the files while you're running the live version. So since this is only going to be used for installing Linux, I'm going to go ahead and slide this all the way up and uh, not have any room for using it as a typical thumb drive. So now um, down here on these checkboxes once again, you can see that I have uh, hide the partition on the key. That means that when you plug it into a regular Windows machine or a regular machine, when it pops up with that auto run or when you go into Explorer and look at the files inside of it, you will not see the Linux installation on there. It'll be on a hidden partition. Of course, the second one is format into FAT32. We already talked about that. So the third one is to create a virtual machine. If you want to be able to create, if you want to be able to run this on your Windows machine, then go ahead and click this. But you need to be connected to the internet because it's going to, go, it's going to download Oracle VirtualBox to install on there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this just to show you all the fancy features this thing has to offer. When you're done, click on the lightning bolt. It's going to say, are you sure you want to format? Go ahead and click OK. And this will take a while. So with the magic of video editing, we're going to fast forward here to the end. I believe this actually took probably about five minutes. Okay, so now it's done. When it finishes, it's gonna launch its little, uh, its homepage, the live USB homepage. Go through here, you can see all the different features it has. But what we're gonna do is go ahead and close it. Now we're going to launch the USB drive. J down here, you see I have VirtualBox. Double click on VirtualBox to run it. All right, so when it finally comes up, we have these different options here. You can see that our live Linux is already in here. You can go into settings and adjust uh, your, how many processors and how many threads you want assigned to the machine. You can adjust uh, all kinds of options, your, the amount of RAM dedicated to it. If you, wanna, if you have a CD in your physical computer CD drive, you can assign it to this virtual machine or you can just load an ISO and uh, make it think that the actual CD is inserted. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on start. A um, bunch of dialog boxes are gonna pop up telling you that it's going to capture your mouse and how to get it back, which by default is the right control. Now you can see that it's starting up here, more dialog, same as it's running in 32-bit mode. I click okay. Now what you see here is exactly how it would look if you were booting from this drive on your physical computer. This virtual machine is a, uh, an exact replica. Another dialog box. And once the machine boots, you can see this is your Linux installation. You can, this is a persistent machine, so any changes that you make will be saved for later. So now you're finished. This is how you set up a Linux drive. Um, from here, you can install Linux onto your machine. So that is the easiest and most feature-filled way I have found to install Linux. If you have any questions or comments, 
go ahead and leave them below in the comments section. Let us know of any improvements, uh, anything that you know of that is an easier way to do this tutorial. Or if you have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see, shoot us an email at suggestions at covid.tv or you can follow us at twitter.com slash kovident. Thank you for watching.